Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a short digital rebar provision video. This one's sort of fun because we're going to deploy digital rebar in Amazon and then we're going to add machines to it using the join up script, which is super handy. This is a prep for the video I'm about to shoot to show you how to use Ansible dynamic inventories, which is also sort of fun. Um, and I'm going to use uh, Amazon resources just because they're easy. But you could do this in a, a dozen different ways. Um, but here's the Amazon one. Uh, if you want, uh, this is in the docs. Uh, we have a page for set up Amazon, and I'm literally going to be cutting and pasting from these documents uh, with one modification that I have that's not in the published, it's not been accepted yet. So in this case, um, what we want to do is we just want to go into our dashboard, uh, not our, and I'm just going to launch a new instance. So here we go. Uh, you can see I had one before and for the DRP server we can just use the Amazon Linux pretty straightforward stuff uh, we don't need much of a machine but we do want something so uh, for the video we don't want it to lag I'll do a two CPU four gigs of RAM uh, you can do less but at some point it becomes a little silly um, so all this is pretty straightforward the big thing that I want to do here is I'm gonna paste in my install instructions from that page. So basically what it's doing is it's going to install uh, tar, it's going to uh, install the um, curl, the digital rebar install strip, then it's going to run it um, and what I want to do is I want to tell it to use version tip. So I'm getting the tip script and I'm telling it to install version tip. If you don't do that you'll get stable, not a big deal. And then I have a couple of extra commands in here that are sort of cool. Um, they upload some content packs, they create a workflow for Amazon because Amazon has its own stage, and then they set the preferences to use Discover AWS. So this is basically taking you through the wizard steps. Pretty straightforward. Uh, local sort is great. I'm going to give it a name. Rob Demo. And I am going to give it a security group uh, for digital rebar typical ports. Uh, actually, this isn't the right one. That's old, old digital rebar. So this is digital rebar provision, which needs 8092 and 8091. And I don't actually need SSH for this because um, the script sets everything up. But uh, it's always nice to have a SSH. We're going to see how it looks. That looks great. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and proceed without a key pair because this is you just don't need it for this uh, this demo. You don't need it at all. Uh, one of the things that we'll do with digital rebar is inject the keys uh, and so you'll get to see that uh, process coming and so uh, you can manage your keys without giving them to Amazon if you want to. Uh, and so it's pretty straightforward from that perspective. Now one thing I didn't do is if you look in these docs um, I didn't copy this Kubernetes uh, plugin. This is uh, to also install our rebar integrated Kubernetes bootstrapping. Uh, I haven't worked out all the details on getting this to work with Amazon. This will definitely make it run, uh, but uh, Amazon networking is not, uh, doesn't align with what Crib expects, and so there's probably some deltas there. It's a great place to play. If you want to play with Crib, uh, we have a great community doing all sorts of HA, auto automation, zero touch stuff, um, some secrets unlocking. There's a lot of activity in Crib, um, which is a zero touch Kubernetes, has its own docs page and all sorts of stuff. Uh, really, I'm just stalling for time while we wait for uh, the system to finish coming up. Uh, which looks pretty good. We're still initializing the system. Let's grab our public IP address and see how we're doing. HTTPS. Here's our... Uh, that is probably not what I want. Well, we haven't... It's not showing me the address. Come on, you can do it. Here's our public IP address. Grabbed it. And so I'm going to that IP address, 8092. And it's already up. So this is telling me this is what you'll see anytime you start new, a new digital rebar with a self-signed certificate, which is what you know, does by default. Just have to accept that certificate. And then this will start the system. Uh, so you can use rocket skates and uh, our password, R-O-C-K-E-T-R-0, sorry, R-0-C-K-E-T-S-S-K-8-T-S. -S. You can just hover here if you don't want to remember it. And I have to type it correctly. It's always helpful to uh, 
get the password correct. And this is the normal startup screen for Digital Rebar. So in about two minutes, I was able to get Digital Rebar running up in uh, Amazon. It's very handy. Now, of course, uh, I'm not going to use ISOs for provisioning boot ems, and I don't need subnets. Uh, change password is always handy, but we'll change it. And there's no machines. Otherwise, I'm, I'm pretty much ready. Even uh, things I normally would have to configure in, in the old school days, uh, my default workflow and def unknown boot environment are set. This is very important. If you don't set this, then when new machines are added, they won't they won't know what they're doing. And if I jump over to catalog, that script added some of our libraries. Digital Reaper Revision this is the machine itself, um, which you can now upgrade dynamically. It's pretty cool. Um, although this button doesn't work, it it'll can't, too big a thing to move through the browser, so you have to do the download and then upload. Extraneous details. You want the meat. Let's get back to the meat. Um, so I now have an empty digital rebar provision server. If I jump back to the docs, you'll see there's actually an instruction for how to add new machines into the docs here. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to take this curl bash. I'm going to go back to my instances. I'm going to create and launch some more instances. In this case, I want, I, I like CentOS. Um, and so we don't need this hardened one. We're just going to use 7.5. That looks pretty good. Uh, we'll create a we'll create some machines that are a little bit even beefier because I'm gonna use this in my next thing to do some Ansible deployment or uh, sorry K3S deployment using Ansible uh, so let's do that that looks great I want three of those even better now is where I go back into my script details and I have to come in and put in my Ansible address mm -hmm. it's right here Oops. So let me put that in here. Now I'm going to point out something very, very important. The API is running on 8092. 8091 is our machine's join up script. So if you want to look at what that looks like, you can paste that in. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that uh, this is, you might note about security in this case. Um, this is the join up script. It includes a token that allows a single machine to add itself to the system. There's all sorts of stuff. This is normally deployed behind your firewall. Uh, and you might choose not to expose 8091 in the uh, VLAN so it could only be used internally. That makes sense to me. Uh, in this case, I'm keeping it simple so I can check it. But uh, there's nothing that says you have to make this externally exposed for this, the type of demo that we're doing. Uh, so that looks good. I've got three machines coming. I'm going to add some storage. That all looks fine. As always, I'd like to have a name. Uh, let's see, demo node. Perfect. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to come in, I think somewhere in here I have ah, K3S ports. And I also just want the minimal SSH because I'm going to be doing some Ansible. So I need those two things for this demo. How are we doing? Uh, we're doing great, although I'm about to forget something, so we're going to fix that. So over here, one thing that we don't have in the script is my ability to set an SSH key, which I definitely, definitely want for Ansible. So I'm going to go into Profiles. I'm going to go into the Global Profile, and I'm going to set I'm going to set globally an access key into the system. So in this case, I went to edit for the global profile. Global profile is a special profile that all the machines see the parameters that are set for it. Here's the access keys. And you'll see access keys gives me a sample user and key. I'm going to grab my key. Uh, you're welcome to put this on all your systems too. Uh, we love having uh, you know access to other people's systems. So go, go ahead. This is my public key. Uh, just don't call me expecting help uh, with your public key. There we go. All right, so there is my public key. So I do this, I hit save, and now what I've done is I have added the access key in. So the way the workflow that we've built for AWS is going to work is that it's going to do a normal discovery, and discovery is going to do an inventory. It's going to set your keys and do all sorts of important stuff. Then we're going to do an AWS Discover, which is going to talk to the Magic API and retrieve information about the instance and its IP address and things like that. And we're going to install the runner so we can keep sending commands to it even if you reboot the machine. Pretty basic stuff, um, but not a sledgehammer discovery type thing, uh, not our normal discovery path. So here now I'm set. 
like before, I don't need a key because I'm about to add my own key. Poof. Let's see our instances over here. And we're spinning up these three machines coming up for my demo. All right, this looks great. So as those come up, this is my digital rebar instance. And we're going to start getting events from those machines uh, being created and then provisioned. And, and you'll get to see them come through the system. Uh, and they'll show up over here on my machines view. And there's refresh. Wow, that was fast. And now I have my machines, and they're all going through the discovery complete process. And that be that, I am done. I can now actually do uh, these will turn over into runnable in just a second. And you can see it's still doing updates from the process. Um, but that's it. The, I now have a digital rebar system with three machines to play with. I could build workflows and play and do whatever I want. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to actually hit them with Ansible, um, which is pretty cool, using uh, the digital rebar API. So tune in for that. But in the meantime, if you just want to play with digital rebar and figure out how workflows work and things like that, you don't need physical gears. You don't even need virtual box, which is what we usually recommend to play with locally. Uh, you can get machines in Amazon and be running in 10 minutes, especially if you like to chatter uh, like I do. It might take you even five if you really automate a little bit more. I uh, hope this was helpful. If you have more questions, uh, join our Slack. You can go to rackn.com uh, and request Slack access, and we're happy to add you in. We have a very vibrant and active uh, community of operators uh, sharing tips and talking about how to make things better. So please come join us.